everybody. Uh, that was an awesome introduction. If you're available to do pitches for me, I would love to talk later. Um, all right, uh, so my first word today is fear. The second word is uncertainty. Uh, lack of information, anxiety. These are all things I encounter when I'm traveling to new places or about to get up on stage. That, that was a joke. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a few different things today, but I wanna start off with those things I just mentioned in terms of traveling to a new place. So I've been, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 countries you know, over the years as I travel, and it's always kind of um, a little uh, hard kind of getting used to a new place. It's a new culture, you don't necessarily you know, know how to act, you don't know what to expect. And if you haven't been there before, you can get easily get lost. There's all these things kind of come into play, and there's usually sometimes uh, you know, a cultural shock. Uh, I had one the other day, uh, I was here with um, my co-founder, uh, Satwant, you know, we had to get some dinner, and he ordered fish and chips. Right? Seems pretty normal. My experience with fish and chips is like a Long John Silver thing where you get little fish sticks and that's kind of all she wrote. So the server comes in with this gigantic fish on a plate, it was like this huge thing. And I was like, oh my God, like that's, that's a huge fish stick. He goes, it's not a fish stick, this is an actual fish. I was like, oh, you're, you're, you're putting me on, there's no way that's an actual fish. So we got into a little bit of an argument, we almost came to blows. Um, but for me that was like a massive you know, kind of shock, but I began to realize that you know, when you go to a new place, and again, you discover these things, it would have been way more helpful if I had been able to, say, explore London ahead of time, or learn a little more about the culture, the customs, or even some basic things like what types of food is being served. So how does this apply for government, enterprise, and uh, you know, brand transformative applications? How are these technologies useful? And how am I gonna connect this all to fish sticks? So first and foremost, disruption. Disruption facilitates and accelerates change. It also creates opportunity. Uh, obviously, in the world today, we have a whole lot of crazy disruption going on, and we're finally getting over COVID. There's all the climate stuff. People are like, oh, I'm not gonna come into work today. I'd rather work from home. These are massive things of upheaval happening across you know, all the industries. And this is either a very bad thing or it can be a very good thing. Um, and these create, again, you know, opportunities for disruption in a variety of different industries, only if you're prepared for it and if you start using the right technologies. So kind of what I want to talk about today is what I would call the Web3 trifecta. Artificial intelligence, blockchain, and the metaverse. So first and foremost, the metaverse is not a game. It has game-like qualities, it uses game technology, but it's creating a very, very powerful thing that I think is ultimately gonna change a lot of the fabric of our economies, our industries, and how we live, we work, we play, and how we communicate, and how we explore other cultures and learn about fish and chips. But you can't have a fully uh, realized metaverse without other key and important technologies, specifically artificial intelligence and blockchain. These all fit together. Individually, they're cool and powerful, but together it's like this, there's this crazy uh, you know, inflection point of convergence, singularity, all the cool fun buzzwords. But let me show you how they all fit together. Before that, quick definitions for people that aren't quite familiar with it, but also I have my own kind of spin on some of these definitions. So artificial intelligence, I'm sure everybody's heard of ChatGPT lately and how crazy fast that's been growing, accelerating and innovating. Uh, and now people are like, oh my God, you know, the big smart AI is gonna take over the world, we have to be careful, we have to rush to innovation. Other people are saying, let's accelerate and go faster. But the use cases, even in the last three, four or five months, uh, have just been exploding. A lot of amazing things are happening. Um, even in like the last two months since uh, you know, chat GPT-4 kind of came out. So if you think about AI in a box, that's one thing, but again, in the context of adding in blockchain and metaverse, some amazing and magical things are about to happen. Blockchain, I'm sure everybody here is familiar with it. It's more than just cryptocurrency, and it's more than just a way to kind of store data securely. Blockchain is a necessary and key and fundamental technology to realizing the full potential of the metaverse and to a degree also AI. When we do these crazy amazing simulations of you know, cities or towns or, or games or experiences or whatever, blockchain gives us the ability to make sure that the data that we use to drive the simulations is trusted, it's secure, we know where it came from, 
We, we believe in it and it's just solid. And you need that if you're going to engage in commerce, you need to protect identity, and you need to make sure that the simulation of something that's you know, very important or critical infrastructure, you can believe what you see. So blockchain is critical. And BSV is pretty much the only one on the planet that can handle the size, the speed, the scale, and the cost to bring the metaverse fully to life. So the metaverse, most people think this is all about virtual reality, and let's just stop there. For me and for my company, the metaverse is a fuller. It's about who you are, where you are, the world around you, and accessing data and information and knowledge in new ways, whether it's augmented reality for my environment that I'm here at, or whether it's a 3D or virtual simulation for some other location. Um, all of these things together, when you combine them with data from IoT and sensors to open government, you know, it's like databases and intelligence, and then you slide in some amazing artificial intelligence, we can create a near-perfect simulation of the real world that can be used for all kinds of sort of fun things, but also uh, creates new opportunities uh, for government and business and brand transformative applications. So why is this important? This is, this is about to be a massive, massive industry in a very short period of time. So, you know, according to, you know, Citi and, uh, you know, Goldman Sachs and other people, this, the potential of the metaverse is staggering in terms of the amount of money it can create. But when you read the fine print, they don't say metaverse in general, they say metaverse monetization. There's very few people that are talking about how do you monetize the metaverse? They're all about, oh, cool, new hardware and fun new games. But monetization is key and critical, and to do that, you have to have a way to, I guess, uh, you know, link and create value between the real world and the digital world or the, or the virtual one, or we call it digital or physical plus digital. If you can do that, and you need blockchain to do that securely, that opens up so many opportunities for commerce and makes it easy to tap into this full potential. So going along those lines, uh, we've come up with a way to kind of uh, reimagine or kind of envision how all this fits together so we can help a government or a business or a brand or a content creator or a consumer. How do you create something that's amazing and compelling and useful with utility that you can also monetize? And so instead of treating augmented reality and virtual reality as two completely different things, we bring them together, we tie them to location, and we kind of build a nice vertical stack where each layer builds upon the next, starting with the real world, and then data, and then augmented reality, then digital twins, you know, and so on and so forth. So this is what the metaverse is going to look like. The picture on the left is a real picture, it's from Google Earth, and the picture on the right is from our awesome, super cool Omniscape platform. Most of you, if you've experienced any kind of metaverse application so far, you've seen very low polygon, very basic, you know, stuttery sort of, you know, gamey sort of whatevers. But this is where, where things are going, and this is what we're all going to be using in the very near future. So I'm going to show you a couple pictures just to give you some context, and then I'm going to get back to the super cool stuff. So this is part of a digital twin of New York City. It's to scale, and there's lots and lots of buildings in there. And of course, that's me flying around because I have superpowers. Um, this is somewhere, I don't remember where, because I didn't leave myself notes. But this is like an aerial view. This is in Las Vegas. It's such a pretty building. Uh, this is in Colorado, the Coors Stadium. Uh, this is local. Anybody a fan? Yes, no? <laughs> don't, hate, don't hate me. Um, but you'll notice that the buildings are textured. If you live here, I'm sure you know exactly where this is. Do you know where this is? How about this? It's close to the other one, that's a little hint. So when we're able to build a, a 3D digital twin to scale of real world offices, buildings, stadiums, malls, airports, parks, or just you know the ent entire city, it's amazing to get in and explore and look around and, and kind of learn about a city or, you know, learn some culture or, you know, develop all kinds of great data visualizations for urban planning or commercial real estate development or, you know, tracking crime statistics. I mean, there's so many things you can do when you have this set up this way. But when you kind of start blending in other things like augmented reality and kind of breaching that fourth wall where we can be in one city experiencing or exploring another city and interacting with people that are actually there, 
We use VR or, or 3D and they're using mobile AR. It creates all kinds of new and interesting opportunities. So this is an example of, of a metaverse apartment. At some point in the near future, probably later this month, um, everybody will have the opportunity to have their own little metaverse apartment that you can decorate, you can have your friends over and socialize in. It's all kind of cool, fun stuff. But this could just as easily be an office, it could be a cafe, it could be a small business, or it could be a large business. The point here is that we are taking all these technologies together and building something that is specifically designed for business, for you know, brand awareness, for engagement, for socializing, for collaboration, all the cool, amazing things we talk about for the metaverse, but isn't really being uh, brought to the market by other guys that are focusing on just games or just novel experiences. We're trying to build, I guess, a framework to make the really cool stuff happen. And of course, this isn't a real city, but you know, we like to have a little bit of fun here and there too. So getting back to the transformative uh, sort of applications here, when you have these digital twins and you're able to bring in and blend you know, blockchain and AI and all this other sort of government data, we can start doing things where instead of me having to you know, go to the DMV or government office to you know, file an application and wait in line and kind of go through all that and, and have some anxiety, right? You know, I've never done this before and it's a government sort of thing and I don't have to have time to take off from work and I got kids I got to deal with. The metaverse with all of these other sort of technologies blended in make it easy for me to go and do this sort of stuff in a way that's more comfortable or even will let me kind of go and experience it ahead of time so I know what to expect. If I had been able to, you know, walk around this particular venue or walk around downtown or whatever before even flying here, I would have felt way more comfortable to just leave my hotel and walk around, not worry about getting lost instead of trying to stare at my phone, clearly a tourist who's lost. Um, so, uh, and the same thing too when we start thinking about like, like even bringing in AI, you know, chat GPT is powerful, you can ask it questions, it can answer you, but what happens if you take AI like that and you give it an avatar and you put, you put it in the role of a customer service agent or a tourism guide or, you know, a, another government worker or something, you suddenly start bringing these digital twins to life and creating uh, a very, uh, a very fertile ground to create almost an unlimited number of applications that you can then obviously monetize, grow a business, or change an industry and disrupt how things are done. Whether it's um, you know, some of these like retail, or travel, education, and again, you know, government services, city planning, the, the possibilities are endless if you have this trifecta working together in a way that's easy uh, and accessible, whether you're a developer or you're just a business that you know, wants to get in this. But now is the time for people to really start thinking about what is your metaverse strategy? How are you gonna take advantage of this? The metaverse, as I've kind of described it today, isn't gonna happen over 10 or 15 years. Again, granted, it's been percolating for a while, but there's a lot of things happening in the industry right now that's being impacted by these external factors. You know, whether it's COVID, it's work from home, it's economic upheaval, it's political upheaval. There's gonna be a time in the very near future that's gonna flip a switch and suddenly, just like you know, we had this massive, hey, here's the iPhone, everything changes. Here's the internet, everything changes. Here's chat GPT. I mean, six months, everything changes. The metaverse is gonna hit a point in the very near future that's gonna have radical changes and impact everywhere and it's gonna suddenly be in your face. And if your company or your business or your government is not ready and prepared for it and don't have a plan, you're gonna miss out while everybody else adapts dives in, gets used to it, and has a strategy that they implement. And this is what we would like to help you with. So I'm trying to talk a little faster because my time is running out. I wanted to have a little bit of time to take a couple of questions, but I can't see anybody in the audience. So um, I'm going to, if anybody wants to just shout out a question first without shouting over somebody else, that would be helpful. Maybe, or somebody have a mic to kind of go around? Yeah, we've got a mic. All right. Uh, any volunteers for, for a question? Yes, over here. Okay. Hello. Over there. Yeah. Hi. Hello? Oh, you're going to hear <laughs> So, uh, just uh, wondering about the psychological impact of this metaverse. That is a fantastic question. Um, so, there's a couple of different ways to look at it. If you take a very dystopian view, uh, people are going to be stuck in their homes, they're already dusty, you know, drooling in a corner with their head-mounted display on, and people are going to completely forget about you, and that's it, game over. I, I don't believe that. I think that the metaverse, again, the way I describe it, is going to be something that's way more interesting. Part of our goal is to help people connect. 
connect with your world around you and connect with other people. So for example, I talk about digital twins of London. For me to be in say, say Dallas, Texas, I can you know, hop online, I can get my little avatar, I can come here to London and explore in 3D, which is pretty cool. But being able to interact with people that are here in London, that are also in that digital twin, or are walking up and down the street using kind of the augmented reality to see me like as a hologram, that helps me you know, transcend borders and distance and really be able to kind of you know, communicate and interact. And that could easily turn into a you know, friendship, a relationship, or even a job opportunity. You know, with the metaverse, time and distance are, are almost irrelevant. You could be a single mom in the Philippines having a job in Louisville, Kentucky, working online in that metaverse environment, selling you know, 3D Nike shoes to you know, somebody in Malaysia or something. So the potential benefit to the metaverse is really, you know, it addresses the promise that the internet was supposed to have, right? You know, the internet is going to be the great equalizer. The web will bring the world to you. You'll be able to do anything, get access to information. And we've kind of messed it up with all the social media and all the other sort of issues. And it's very isolating. You know, most people, you're on your phone all day long, you know, kind of by yourself. We don't really talk anymore. But with the metaverse, we can help connect people. And even if you have issues, you're maybe for an introvert like me, you don't want to necessarily go outside or you know, go other places, you still have the ability to meet and interact in a safe environment because you're at home. Or for people that really have social issues, you know, it's not that hard having an AI-driven uh, you know, 3D pet or a 3D avatar that can be your friend, that can help you out, that can watch over you, remind you to take your pills, or you know, kind of just check in on you. So I think for, for mental health and a, a lot of other issues, if it's done right, the metaverse and AI, AI will be very, very positive and beneficial thing for a lot of people. Robert? Uh, right over here. Okay. Hi, it's uh, Marquez here from bsvsearch.com. Um, thanks for the presentation. It just reminds me about 10 years ago when I was playing around with uh, Second Life. And that was, you know, they had Linden dollars and people mm -hmm. could have apartments for their avatars. And I'm just wondering, since then, up until now, what advances have, have we made in that technology? Um, there's a couple, and this will probably be the last question. I'm a little bit over time, and I want to wrap up before they drag me off the stage. Um, so the fidelity of the graphics has certainly changed. You know, we can simulate physics and weather and all kinds of other things. We can have thousands and thousands of people in the same environment. And kind of the, the graphic fidelity now is almost photorealistic, like the photo I showed earlier between Google Earth and, and Omniscape. I mean, it's almost, it's almost identical. So, and then beyond that, we have other things like, obviously, the advancements in AI, um, other things related to, say, networking, uh, interfaces. I mean, all of that is here. Plus, we also have blockchain. Blockchain wasn't around with, you know, Second Life first came out. So a lot of things were duplicated and people got cheated all the time. Um, so I would say straight across the board, a lot of the technology has changed and evolved, but now it's at a point where it's all kind of converging and we're able to do new things that we couldn't do previously. So on that note, I will say thank you, everybody. Feel free to find me and ask me other questions out in the booth, and I'm going to escape. Thank you. Thank you.